So I have a question for you. Our affirmation today is, I am blessed and grateful for my feelings and emotions. What do you feel? What do you think? What, do you, what goes through your mind when you hear that? Do you really? Are you really? You know, I'm grateful for my joy and my happiness. I ain't too grateful for some of the other feelings that go through my head, like anger and frustration and, and, and sadness and fear and all that other stuff. You know, we in this culture, in this country, have been in, on an emotional roller coaster now for a while. And just, I, I know the way I was feeling was I'm finally getting used to being in my house and doing everything from here on the computers, talking to you on Zoom. And now it's starting to all change. And we're kind of going back to where we were, and yet we're not really going back to anything. We're really going forward to something different. And with a lot of the qualities that look a lot like the way it used to be. So there's a whole new set of adjustments and things to be concerned about and to be afraid of or to be joyful about or to have all these worlds of emotions, a lot of fear, a lot of um, anger as people are going through change. All this is happening. So it's, it's interesting and it's right on schedule for me personally that this whole month we're talking about emotions and we're going to be looking at them from, not, from the value of them and for the, from the purpose of them. Um, you know, emotions come out of our beliefs. Our beliefs and our both conscious and unconscious. If you believe in that you're safe and solid and secure and okay wherever you are in whatever situation you're in, you're going to walk through life in a very different place than for some of us who maybe are fearful of certain places or certain, I, I used to be really afraid of the dark. I wasn't afraid of the dark. I was afraid of what was in the dark. Dark was fine. But what might be in the dark was pretty, pretty freaking scary for me. And, and I used to, my, my, I have a great imagination. And as a kid, I would imagine all sorts of things in the dark, you know, monsters under my bed and, and when I, we, someone hung a towel on the outside of our bathroom door when I was a kid. And when I looked out of the bathroom and there was that towel, I saw some kind of something there that was going to get me. And I wouldn't come out of the bathroom for quite a while. And it was not fun. It was not pretty. But it was, it was emotion driven by fear, the fear that paralyzed me. And, and, but that fear only made sense if you understood what I believed behind it. I mean, you, people, you know, you could be made fun of. You could say, well, you shouldn't believe that and get over yourself and what's wrong with that. And you should know better than this feeling or that feeling. But it doesn't make the feeling go away and it doesn't change it. So, so feelings are the things which really spice up our life. And they're the things which pull us through every day and into the next. Now, many of you who are thoughtful people and have been thinking people for a long time, you, you're more in the, in the world, perhaps, of thought. So when something happens, you become thoughtful about it. Good for you. I'm a little more like Maya, where when something happens, especially if it's a surprise, my emotions kick in first. And then I have to figure out what, what are the emotions telling me and what do I really think about it? And what do I really believe and what do I really feel? So whichever place you start, whether you start as a thinking person who comes up with concepts or you start as emotional, it's still the same end point, And that is we need to find ways to understand our feelings and emotions and to understand who we are and to understand where we are in the world and what our beliefs are about that. There's a great uh, story in the Upanishads, which... Um, was, has been picked up and taught in science of mind quite a, for quite a long time now, uh, of what is, it, what is life? Life is a coach to everywhere. Your body, your mind, your spirit, your whole self is like a coach. Not a, not a coach like a football coach, but a coach like he used to ride around in in the times when the Upanishads were written. And the Upanishads predate the Bible, their, their ancient writings. And, and what they say in that, they have a model of, of human experience that starts with the coach as your whole self. 
And in the coach is this great passenger, this spiritual you, this total you, the one we talk about that spirit is work, working and living through us. And then there's the part of us with it's our beliefs, which is the one sitting up on the top of the coach with the reins. And the horse are the, is the emotion. The horse represents all emotion. And so they, they do a whole lot of work with that. But one of the important pieces is where the horse goes and how it goes is all about what you believe, all about the beliefs that are holding the reins. And if you don't have any beliefs about much of anything, or if you don't have beliefs about a situation you find yourself in, then emotions take over and off you go. And you all know what you've seen enough cowboy movies probably to know what a runaway horse looks like and how the carriage gets demolished and all of that. None of us want that for ourselves or for our lives. So it's about how we're going to handle both our emotions and our beliefs behind it. And there are two choices. You can welcome them. Welcome your emotions. Ah, there's Bob feeling angry today. There's Bob feeling happy. I'm awake at 2 o'clock in the morning, one wide awake with all this stuff running around in my head, and I realize I'm angry and I'm afraid about something. I'll spare you the details. But if I can step back and look at that and say, oh, look, that's Bob being angry. Instead of being so in the feeling and emotion that I can't see my way through or around it. So one of the things that happens with, with adults and teens and kids and everybody else over, over time is that you, learn, you can learn to develop a, an observing self, a self within you that can see what you're feeling, that can think about it and yet stand back from it a little bit. Step back above it and beyond it and behind it so that so that your emotions become um, just information and there's a real interesting thing that happens especially with strong emotions and that is it triggers a physiology within us called fight flight or freeze and you all know that somebody startles you or you suddenly get very frightened or something comes along that really upsets you what do you go into? I'm either going to pound it or I'm going to be running away from it or I'm going to just freeze and do nothing. Either way, it's a physiological, mental, emotional reaction to that thought, that feeling, whatever it is. And I don't want any stories, but just think about if that's happened to you. Because what's important in that is that fight, flight, freeze, which comes from our reptilian brain, that part of our brain that is ancient and goes way, way back, it comes from there and it prepares us to run in case the big animal is going to eat us or fight if we think we can defeat it. Or if you're, <laughs> if you're one of those that didn't survive, you maybe just freeze, kind of play a possum and, and, and hope it'll all go away and won't bother you. But what that all does is it takes away that higher function within you that allows you to make decisions, to, allows you to respond to things, allows you to think about what am I feeling and why am I feeling it and how can I understand what's behind it and get beyond it. You know, continuous, continuous sadness it leads to, often leads to depression, or certain kinds of depression. The, the, all of these feelings can become problematic. It's like, that's why we, we're using the spice rack imagery you know if you only had one spice on your spice rack it would life could get really really into a channel of of one taste all the time and that would be no fun uh, but by having a variety the same thing with feelings if you have a variety of feelings then what we need to do is learn how to move between them how to be happy how to be sad how to how to, to handle it when we're discouraged when we're not doing well see our tendency is to do is to react to emotions. You react to something. You react to the emotion. The emotion comes up. You know, some, some of the great anxiety that people have is often because they're so afraid that their anger is going to get loose that they're going to hurt themselves or somebody else. Right? Ideas? I see a few heads out there nodding. You know what I'm talking about. So, so that becomes a hidden kind of, kind of emotion where they, you have to get to the anger to find out you're afraid of it. You have to dig, dig a little deeper and go within you. So there's something you can do with this um, that I think is really cool. And that is um, you take that word react 
R-E-A-C-T. And you pull the C out. C stands for consciousness, clarity, curiosity. And you put it in the front of the word. And what have you got then? C-R-E-A-T. Create almost. <laughs> Missing that last E, right? So you add that last E, which is elevate. Elevate your thought. Elevate your ideas. Elevate yourself into a higher way of looking at yourself, your consciousness, which then allows you to move beyond whatever this is that may be going on for you. You know, and we do that using things like meditation, using things like self-contemplation. Journaling is where I work out a lot of my emotions that are a puzzle to me. I just let the emotion write. And I don't try to make sentences or make them sound right or fit them together or have right English or any of that, but just stream of consciousness. And, we, and I'll let my anger start talking. And it, it says some nasty things sometimes. And it gets going. I let my sadness talk. And I let my joy talk in my journals. You can even go deeper with it if you switch hands. Use your non-dominant hand and let some part of you that you're having trouble with, some feeling, some emotion, some even belief system. And, and it will reveal because it opens up different neural pathways in your brain to those ideas when you use a different hand. So whatever you, we can do, because the ultimate idea here is we are expressions of the divine, right? And as such, our opportunity is to know and understand ourselves and understand ourselves as full, functioning, powerful, giving, loving human beings. Ready to express richly and openly and freely. You know, it's about balancing. It's about getting all of those spices on your spice rack. Nothing's more frustrating to be to be making a really nice recipe and all of a sudden you're missing one of the most important ingredients. I was cooking fish the other night and I didn't have any cream of tartar and it drove me nuts. And I tried it. I couldn't decide if I got to stop cooking and go get the cream of tartar and let whatever I have kind of not be as good as it was or try to figure out something else instead. And I did something else instead. So we, we find balance. We learn to recognize feelings. You know, many people don't know what they are. They can't tell you what, when they're feeling fear or anger or upset. Folks who, who have come through recovery or have been in any kind of mind-numbing mind, uh, addictive experience often don't have, aren't in touch with their feelings. They have no idea what their feelings are. And that's when relationship becomes so important because we get into a relationship where we, we don't know what's going on and who, and who we are and what we feel. I couldn't tell the difference between fear and anger for a long time. And the other real one that people get hung up with is excitement and anxiety. They're right next to each other in the same part of the brain. And when one, one gets triggered, they're right there on that, that same space. And some people can't tell the difference between what's excitement and what's anxiety. Am I really anxious, anxious about this or am I really excited about it? And sometimes it can look the same when you're expressing it. And, and people misunderstood, misread. So having a mirror, having someone that you care about that can reflect back to you what they're sensing and feeling is a way that we begin to build and get to know what our emotions are. There are a lot of other techniques for that too. But it's a very powerful recognition that someone else who really cares about you can be willing to listen and respond and listen and, and give you back some feedback and some emotion and some clarity about what you're thinking and feeling. Because ultimately, what we're doing is shifting those things which did disturb us into that flow of variety that allows us to live in love, live in peace, live in appreciation, love for ourselves, love for our fellow, fellow humans, and love for the planet and the culture and the place we live, the universe. As we begin to let go of judgment, on those feelings that we're having. Instead of making them wrong, recognize them as keys to a greater understanding of ourselves. Then we have the power. Then we have the potential. Then we have the possibility. Then we're no longer victims 
of our own feelings or anyone else's thoughts of any of it. We can step forward with ease, with freedom, with grace. So I want to close with this, this quote from Maya Angelou, which I love and have always loved. It speaks to all of us, but it particularly speaks to, to anything you are doing and participating in the world. And that is, she said, you know, people forget what you say. Believe me, I know that one. People forget what you did. Maybe they're a little slower to forget that one, but they do eventually. But they always remember how they felt when they were with you. And if how people feel being with you is loved, cared for, supported, valued, recognized as being the best thing ever, then that's the best gift we can give to ourselves or to anyone else. And we deserve that. We deserve that for ourselves. We deserve that for our world. Because it's wonderful. You're wonderful. I'm wonderful. And so it is. Thank you. Mm. Thank you.